Yo, what's going on, y'all? What's good? This boy Dwayne. Bring y'all y'all first episode of uh, 30 FPS. I'm gonna just stick with 30 FPS. Call it a day. Don't sound bad. Um, so we're gonna be talking about a little bit about cameras and business and stuff like that. And um, this is my brother Dante. So I'm gonna let him go ahead and introduce himself and talk about the things that he do and a little bit about his background. All right. Hey, my name is Dante. Uh, I own Lost Art Visuals, which is an automotive photography company. Uh, I'm a father of a two-year-old. I'm an ex-military vet, served five years in the Navy. Um, yeah, so let's get this thing started. All right, bet. Um, I ain't even going into detail about me. Most of y'all already know me. Y'all been on this channel for a minute. And um, yeah, so, bruh, question number one. How did you get into photography? Like, what made you really, like... Go ahead first and be like, I want to do this. So for me, it was, I was in the Navy and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do when I got out. I knew from being in the Navy that I didn't want to work for anybody else. I wanted to work for myself. So I had to figure out a career path that would let me do that. Uh, through trial and error, I tried graphic design. I tried a bunch of things through trial and error. Somebody was, uh, you know, happened to be selling a, a camera near my one of my barracks rooms. And I just decided, hey, let me try this. I never had interest in it. Let me just try it. So I got it. I've always been into cars, started shooting the guys' cars that were on base. Um, and, and from there, I just, you know, fell in love with it. I started shooting everything at that point just to learn a camera. So once I figured that all out, um, that's definitely, I definitely figured out what I wanted to do based off of that. Okay. But, um, so for those of y'all that don't know, he is a automotive photographer and, uh, Honestly, top three. Um, besides what you North Borders, I can't think of nobody else. I, I think I'd put Jack Thomas over me. Jack Thomas is really. Oh good. yeah, yeah, yeah. That one kid. I I, could, I wonder if I could probably get him to come on here. Yeah, I could get him here in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. I right, bet we'll have him on here one day uh, in the future. All right, so why automotive photography? Uh, for me, is I've always had a, a love for cars. Ever since I've been young, you know, I've always liked the sound of them, the look of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to be around them. So I figured, hey, might as well, if I figured out that photography is something I wanted to do, might as well do something that I love. So I got into the car scene. Okay, okay, okay. Um, talk about some of the challenges that you faced in automotive photography that, like, most people, you know what I'm saying, they, they think it's, like, relatively easy, you know, when it comes down to it, but... Uh, Get him a little bit about like what it is that that complicates it the, complicates it the most. All right, so I would say my, the number one thing would be that the fact that it's it doesn't make sense to me, but I guess it makes sense you know to the car owners. Yeah, they like to spend all this money on their car, <laughs> but they will never spend a third of it you know on a shoot. You know they 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 want to you know cheap out on the shoot, but they want to spend all these money on car parts. I get it. You want your car to look good, but don't you want to showcase it good? Apparently, that's not how they work. Um, so that's one of the biggest problems. Another one is there's so many people that are into the car scene. So the the car, the automotive niche in general is very saturated, especially in this area. Yeah. There'd be one nice car. Let's say it's a BMW M4. There'd be like probably like six or seven photographers that have shot that same car. It's not like a wedding. It's not like a you know a portrait shoot where you got one guy, you like his style, you do it. No, you for a car guy, you want everybody's style. So you're sharing clients. It's not like you're going to get a giant book that's specifically for you unless you get into the commercial scene. Okay. Yeah. And I understand that, too, because a lot of people that I've seen in, like, the automotive space, they do relatively, like, the same style of pictures. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they go to the same location. They don't relatively pick someone new. Uh, like, they don't location scout. You know what I'm saying? Like... Well, the thing is, that, like, we can location scout, but there's only a certain, fee there's only a select number of locations. Not like portraits. It's not like you're shooting people where you can go to all these different places. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't fit a car in a lot of these these nice places. That's true. That, or you can't get access to them. So, if you're in an area and you've been doing it long enough, it's like, for example, me, Jack Thomas, Austin Media, when he was still doing his thing. You know, we've shot in all the same locations like multiple times. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but know? I mean, y'all make it look unique is yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, so we each have our own unique eye or your own unique perspective. And that's what of makes us, us, you know, like the people that people know about when you say our names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's still, you know, we can't be as creative as we want to unless we have like our own, 
you know, free reign of like all these locations and all these spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that one time we went to Dade and we ran into Diddy. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't know what he's talking about, we ended up going to shoot a, what was it, a BMW X5M um, for our client in Miami. Yeah. yeah. And she wanted to shoot in like a jungle type environment. So with a little digging, we found Star Island. We ended up going into somebody's driveway. Didn't know whose it was because it had like, it looked like a jungle in front of their driveway. Mm-hmm. So again, we had to do it. This is a, the thing about cars. You got to like do it where you can and run when you have to. You know, it's the sad part about it. Yep. But lo and behold, the gra- the door opens up and armed guards come out. And who do you see fly by us on a bike? P. Diddy. And we, it was funny because like we were sitting there, we were shooting. You know what I'm saying? After the guards came out, the guards came out. Obviously, they armed and everything. And like they ain't really say nothing. Like they weren't tripping or nothing. And you see a Christmas tree on the second floor. You see all the Bugattis and Lambos and all these other crazy supercars just, you know, sitting in the front driveway. And then next thing you know, bro, ride out on the bike. And after that, we we was getting ready to leave. And it was so crazy because at first we was tripping because we didn't think that it was him until, like, we got up next to him on the bike. And he just looked at us. And what he's forgetting to mention is how he fangirled over the guy. Man, listen, man. That's Diddy. That's Diddy. That's Diddy. Yeah, I did say Sorry, that. that I was like, like hey, that's dude, that's Diddy. That's Diddy. Let's like, you know what I'm saying? Off him a free shoot or like a photo shoot or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to get in, trying to get business, you know, stuff like that. It wasn't necessarily like, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a like, musical fangirl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, it wasn't nothing like that. It was more like business. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, let's jump on this. If we can make this work, we can finesse this. Then, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's funny. I still know where that house at. I'm sure you I know how to get there. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> Only reason I know is because I still got the pictures. Oh, okay. Other than that, like, I don't, I don't know. Um, Just like uh, I went to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle house. That was kind of crazy. Like, I didn't know it was their house until I was leaving, and they rolled up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy, though. Third question, bro. Like, what's the craziest thing that's happened to you since owning your business? Like, what's the... Okay, let me not say the craziest thing, right? Let me ask you, what was one of the craziest shoots or craziest reason somebody didn't book you for a shoot? I should say. Craziest reason? Yeah. Uh, $5 price difference. That doesn't make any sense because not trying to name any names, but this person had a M4. That's a easily a forty five, fifty thousand dollar car, and you're worried about five dollars. That kind of didn't that's wild, sense, you know. But to each their own. You know, I can't judge him, can't knock him. That's his his business. Life goes on. That's wild. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm gonna tell y'all, um, craziest thing for me. I th- I think I told you this. I don't know if I told you. Um. <laughs> so, um, I had a vendor reach out to me about doing a wedding. People, like the couple, loved my photos, everything. I don't think I had my, I don't think I had a picture of me as the profile picture at the time. Oh, so, I like the, me. yeah, it's yeah. one of those. So the, so the people, like, when I got to the vendor's place, they was like, hey, you Dwayne? I was like, yeah, I'm Dwayne. How you doing? It was like, we good. Um, Yeah, we can't shoot with you. And I was like, why? It was like, it's just specific reasons. I was like, but we we done had phone calls, emails, you know what I'm saying? Um, Like, we was good and ready to go, like, for their wedding and everything. And, like, the day that they met me, it was like, nah, we can't do this. Sounds like uh, how to be racist without saying you're racist. It was crazy because the vendor was like, hey, come in, come in, come in real quick, come in real quick. I, I, they ain't even in business no more. They either ain't in business or they don't live here no more. Um, anyway, um, I don't even know what happened to them. It's just been that long. But uh, turn around, they pulled me to the side. I was like, hey, look, if they not finna book you, um, um, I, I'm not going to do business with them just because based off the like things that's going on right now, I think they racist um, and they just, I think what it is is they don't want to book with a black person. Yeah, and I guess they racist. thought you was right. They thought you were white based off of your name. And I was like, I can see that. You know what I'm saying? And we went back in there and um, 
they was like, yeah, sorry. Um, you can keep the deposit and everything, but we can't we can't book with you. And I was like, why? They like they would not just outright say because you black. Like literally, but I was like, all right, you know, it is what it is. You know, you can't please everybody. Yeah. See, you know, that's one thing that I'm I'm thankful for that I have never run into. I've never run into you know racism in the car scene. A lot of the times, car guys, you know, they love every car. They love everybody. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. So they don't really have that 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 uh, stereotype, that stigma in their their personality. But um, yeah, so I've noticed when it gets a lot more personal in photography. Yeah. People tend to be like that. Yeah. I, I've seen it before. I've heard about it before. Um, you could tell by how people comment on certain people's stuff versus others, and vice versa. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. They so like they they pick and choose. On today, you know? Like they really do pick and choose about who they want to support, who they want to work with. You know what I'm saying? Like I know it's a couple of y'all. Uh, I ain't even gonna say a couple of y'all. It's like two people in the like specifically um, that will post stuff, and I reach out to them. I reach out to them just just as a gag. I don't reach out to them like to pick up work from them. Like I'm pretty sure, and I'm 100 percent positive. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't even want to work with you anyways, bro. Um. Technically, one of them a female, but um, you know what I'm saying. Like, it is what it is. I respect you and everything that you got going on. You know what I'm saying. Just know, I know what you be saying. You know what I'm saying. So, yeah. But um, yeah, bro. Like, it's wild because it's enough money out there for everybody to eat. You know what I'm saying. Like, people get married left and right all over the place, and you'd be surprised. Like, people will not book you just because it's you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep, there's certain, certain. I guess you would say different strokes for different folks. You know the same, but it it kind of sucks, you know. But it's the reality of what we do. Yeah, there's something you got to get over. Something you got to push past. Yeah, and me, dog. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't look at it no type of way. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. Cause again, you can't please everybody, and you can't make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um. It's some people out there again that's not gonna book you because it's you, but at the same time, it's gonna be people that that's saving up to book you, and it's people that's gonna book you just because they know you, they know your personality and everything it is. You know it's what I'm like saying? A famili familiarity thing. Yeah, you know, you know they like know you, they know that you're type, they know something about you or that they like whatever. You know, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, bro, that's why certain people I fool with them, and um. You see who I be with because we relate, we get money together, and I like I, I don't gatekeep. You know what I'm saying? Like if I need somebody to step in and do something, I reach out and be like, hey, you busy this day, you free this day. You know what I'm saying? I put work out there, I pass work along to other people. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is with that. But again, everybody ain't able, dog. So yeah, it's up. And that's on you, not on me. I don't be for nobody. Just stop bringing my name up. There's really no point in it in our industry. I don't understand why so many people have this, like, content contention with others. Like, they want to beef. They want to talk <clears throat> smack. They want to constantly, like, degrade or belittle or gatekeep certain things. Like, dude, that's that's not what this is about. You're supposed to build community. You're supposed to be nicer to people. You're supposed to, you know past work on that you can't pass, or, you know you, that you can't you know fulfill things yeah. like that like stuff like that is important you oh know, yeah that's how you put people on that's how you build community that's how you make you know the photography scene not look so you know stuck up and arrogant because sometimes it can look like that you know sometimes for a lot of people that's what deters them from starting yeah you know and it is. and it's sad to say but a lot of people just need to have a have a more open mind and an open heart towards others that are just starting. You started somewhere too. Everybody started at ground zero. Nobody's special. Big facts. Big facts. And like people be reaching out. You know what I'm saying? People reach out to you just to learn, and not necessarily me, because I learned through trial and error. You know what I'm saying? And watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos and seeing how other people did what they did and why they did it that way and taking notes. You know what I'm saying? Learning from them. So that's how I came up and really, like, did a bunch of free shoots and 
It was like, all right, bet. So this is how you do this. And a lot of people kind of don't fool with my style of photography either is because I use flash. And I'll say this, right? Like, I get the whole light and everything, but, like, bro, you can still shoot with a flash and do light and airy photos. Yeah. I think it's more so they just don't know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that they don't know how to do it. Some, some of the time they don't. Cho- they choose not to. You know, like, like for example, for me, my, you know, the way that I edit, the way that I do cars. Yeah. That's what got me known. That's what got me in my eyes out there. So why would you change something? Why would you, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. You know, why would Facts. You, that's your style. Facts. Everybody has a different one. If they want to find somebody that does flash, they can come to you. You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's everybody. I ain't tripping about it. Like that's like for in my industry when people light paint. Yeah. I don't personally like doing that. To me, it look, makes the cars look fake. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. big market for people that people do that. that do that type of stuff. Shout out to Black Tire Media. He does that for BMW for big giant companies, and he's really good at it. He makes it look realistic. Yeah, but not yeah, everybody yeah. can pull that off. You know, it That's takes a true. lot of time. It takes a lot of practice. He's, you know, and he's another one. He doesn't gatekeep. He doesn't, you know, put people down. I've reached out to him, and he's he was going to pull me on a shoot if he had the time. I mean, unfortunately, he didn't, but. He, he's he's you know like he's what people need that is the type of photographer that we need out here you know that's the type of person that we need somebody that's not going to get keep that's going to put other people on game yeah that's yeah, going to yeah. constantly help and push others you know to be to be better they want to see you be better they don't care about how much money you make if you make more than them or whatever they yeah just yeah, yeah. See you better you know yeah yeah and them them really be the them really be the good people though mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like them be the ones that reach out and teach people and show people how to do everything it is that they know how to do, but at the same time, they tell them too, like, hey, look, just do it in your own way. Like, my way of doing things is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't necessarily have to do it how I do it. Like, I stopped using the flash. Bro, I ain't, I'm going to be real. I can't tell you the last time I used the flash. I know. Well, we used the last time we used the flash, we used it as a dang strobe light. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that was at the wedding that just passed. Yeah. Matter of fact, you got that cash up I sent you? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I ain't, bro. Old boy had got off the plane and he sent the bread and I was like, "Let me send this to bro real quick." Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it was funny though because uh, you want to know something? I think they from Indianapolis. Oh yeah. Yeah, they from Indianapolis came all the way down here to Florida just to book with us. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like we get so many people that book with us from different states and then they come down here to Florida. I don't know why. Like, what's what's so... Well, I guess it's to get away from the cold. See, look, listen. For everybody that doesn't live here, Florida seems great. Yeah. All right? <laughs> but for us locals, so... Yeah, dog. We hate it. We hate it, bro. Like, the traffic is horrible. Especially, like, when you're on your way to a shoot. Hmm. Man, you can leave an hour early and still somehow end up being late just because traffic, dog. Like... It's so crazy. Even sometimes you can leave an hour and 30 minutes late and somehow still end up late. Yeah. That's the crazy part. Like, and it's literally like snowbirds and the old people that's just on the road and driving. You know what I'm saying? Like, they in the way. And it's, and then they be in the fast lane. Like, get get out of the fast lane, bro. Yeah, but they, I mean, I, I don't like it either, but we can't judge them. They don't know. That's a Florida thing, you know? Yeah, I know, bro. It's that one of them unwritten laws. Yeah. You know, I still got, I, I told you I found that BTS from that one shoot yeah, uh, yeah. with the Lumix. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. It's over there. I need to get that. Um, so, back on, bro, his car photography. So, what y'all going to see over on top of this at some point in this is, um, you know what I'm saying, like him doing his thing, uh, him doing shoots. Matter of fact, do I have any, like, GoPro footage? I think I got GoPro footage of I don't know if you yeah, doing I your thing, right? It, but I have a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bet. And we can uh, share some of that. Put it overlaid on top of this somewhere, and uh, throw some uh, some finished photos for you. Just th- you can see. Yeah. So y'all can see him. Check out his work. You know what I'm saying? Uh. So I think I'm gonna ask you like one or two more questions, bro. Like, what if you could pick and choose a camera right now, right? If you had unlimited budget. Right now, what camera would you choose? What lenses would you choose? And we speak it for like photography. We're not speaking for like the content creators uh, aspect of it. Yeah. We speak it for just photography. Like, what camera would you use? What lenses would you use? Uh, would you use a CF Express Type A or Type B, like the fastest cars possible, or would you so use like what SD would my cars? Ideal setup be if I had no budget. 
Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so for me, uh, man, it's it's toss up between features and functionality. So like, the A seven R five would probably be my number one choice, mm -hmm. followed by a close second of the A nine three. That's what I think it is. The A nine three for that uh, global shutter thing. That thing's pretty fire. It'd be definitely useful for cars and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, no rolling. Um, no rolling shutter and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I want, and you know something crazy? I have yet to see anybody talk about that for like uh, car photography. Uh, most people don't have the budget to be buying that kind of stuff. No, I know that even like the the big name photographers that do have it. Yeah, because it's it's about like if you're shooting photos, it's about how sharp you can get the car. That's what sells the car. You know? That's true too. So for example, um, the AC but I think it's more so like they've been like more focused on because it's a global shutter. I don't know why I did that because it is a global shutter. But like, I think it's more so like they've been like, oh, I can use a flash with this, or I can shoot. Uh, what is it, 120 frames per second mm -hmm. or something like that? See, but what I've also noticed about a lot of car photographers, especially these bigger name ones, they tend to use a system f till the wheels fall off, you know? They don't upgrade as often as, like, a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer normally does. So, for me, I guess I would go with the A7R5 because of the megapixel count, how sharp yeah. I can get the photos, you yeah. know, and the screen for rollers. That screen that has all that multi-articulating thing, that, yeah, that would be real nice. I ain't gonna lie, that that screen is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. That Imagine screen is kind of crazy. Out of cars when I shoot rollers, so like yeah, I, I know have to get so low to the ground. Hey, listen, dog. I wish we had somebody that could uh, uh, shoot BTS of us, cause I'll drive the car, or his sister Naya will drive the car. You know how many times this man ain't been hit in the head by the damn truck, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Way too many times. <laughs> I was surprised this man ain't got a concussion yet. <laughs> Anything for the shot, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right, bro. Cause like we lay down, bro. We like we do some of the most like awkward poses just to get the shot. You know what I'm saying? Like I've laid down on hot asphalt, burnt my arm. Man, just to get that one angle. Listen, man. I remember one time I laid like flat, flat down in the sand just to get a shot. Like I got up and the people was like, "Yo, no, no, no." Remember we did that one shot with um that one girl. At the beach, I think it was uh, what's her name, Roxy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah and I the dropped the flash. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I dropped the flash About in the water. Four times. And I. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. So we did a shoot one time, right? Uh, with uh Roxy. Just so you know, you're going off on a tangent. Man, it's all right. They'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> they they probably enjoyed this anyways. Uh, so right, we did a shoot. Um, young lady, her name was Roxy. And uh, it was, I ain't going to lie, it was a real good time. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had fun. Uh, we shot in a beach. I used a West Sky FJ400 with a, uh, what was it, East Glow softbox yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it was uh, the one that looked like a honeycomb, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I had the honeycomb grid on there to control the light more so it wasn't going all over the place. And I was shooting with the A7 4 and I think I had like an 80, I think I had an 85 or. Yeah, you had the 85. I had an 85. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was the uh, same angle? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, yeah, I was, like, this this close. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it was, like, this close. It looked like my hands touching, but they're not touching. I was, like, I, I think the camera did get wet, and I know the flash fell in the water. Yeah, I know that for a fact. Full, full, full force fell straight <laughs> in the water. Yeah, wind. Just took it. Full sin. But I got the shot, though. Mm -hmm. I will say that. Or uh, you can find it somewhere on my IG grid. I don't know where it specifically, but uh, it's on there. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of, so, again, bro, as an automotive photographer, tell the people, like, why you prefer automotive photography over, like, oh, any other. <laughs> uh, so, for me, cars don't give you problems. Cars don't argue back. Cars don't complain. Cars don't make excuses. None of that. Cars just sit there and do their job so for me <laughs> that's one of the main reasons I, I still will not dabble in anything else i'll stick with my cars because i am not a person that's going to take that lightly but like if we have a scheduled time we have a scheduled uh shoot we have a location we, don't try to change any of that i'm not a person that likes that kind of thing he say that because we did a shoot with this one chick because i had i had what what i had i had the sam yang 35 to 150 oh uh, f2 yeah, that giant 
Yeah, hey, hey, hey. it might have been a giant conundrum, but um, if Sam Yang can make that lens internal focusing, or not internal focusing, internal zoom instead of an external zoom, um, and they put like a control ring on it. They don't even have to go that far. They just got to no, no, be able no, no. to lock it at every single aperture. Yeah, that that I too. Mean, yeah, but I mean like, but it. I mean like, like as far as like cinema lens wise, if they was to make that same lens, put a control ring on it, and make it an internal zoom, I guarantee you, so many people would buy that lens. Yeah, no, it's not aperture; it's uh, focal length. Focal yeah. length, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that they have all these markings on there, but yeah. it only locks at, at the lowest at thirty five mil. At thirty five mil or one fifty. Yeah, and then it got That's that it. lens creep. Like whenever you it, hold it down, it's not even a lens creep, dude. It is. <laughs> I was taking. If you don't know, I, I was doing. Yeah, I, I remember. Was a second shooter at a wedding, and I was taking detail shots. I remember. Every single time I try to do a flat lay top down shot, that thing just came straight out. Hundred yeah. fifty, right there. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And I, I even talked about it in one of my videos. Uh, that like all it did was like as soon as you put it down, the lens barrel just. Slide straight it's down. It's not a slow slide. It no, it's just like it, a shoot straight down. It's like full on sin, dog. Like it just goes down. So that's like if they could, if they can resolve that issue, then a hundred percent. Like most of the people are talking about the Tamron version of that lens. The Tamron version, like seventeen hundred dollars, whereas the Sam Yang one is, uh, I want to say like, what is it like? I think it's like eleven hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. It's between a thousand to like thirteen hundred dollars, somewhere in that area. And it's 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 just as sharp and it is just as good as the Tamron version of that lens. I a hundred percent recommend the Sam Yang version over the Tamron version, just because the Tamron name is on it. It's a little bit. It's a little bit more expensive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just it's built better. Yeah, I, say that. I will. Yeah, it doesn't slide out of the way that that that. Wait. Whereas, like, if you had like unlimited budget. All right, so I'd go definitely G Master. Uh, from using them in the past, they're hands down the best lenses that I've used. Um, I'm not necessarily a stickler for um, prime lenses like I used to be. Yeah. I uh, because I've seen I've used a 24 to 70 Sigma for whew, God knows how long and. That's been my favorite lens. So if I had to choose, I'd go um, GM, GM 24 to 70 version 2. Yeah. GM 70 to 200 version 2. And then the GM, I don't know if it's a 16 to 35 or I think it's a 16 to 35. Yeah, you tell me. The way, is it a version 1 or version 2? Uh, version 2. They're all version. They all have version 2s now. No, no, I know that. But I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, all version 2s. Okay, okay. Because, uh, and it's not necessarily because they're the newest and greatest thing. You know, for me, it's the size. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd rather have a more compact size. You know, especially for rollers, if a lot of the times, I mean, I have a the Peak Designs wrist strap, but a lot of the times I forget to put it on just being in the heat of the moment. So yeah, I'd rather yeah, have yeah. something that yeah. I can manage for a long period of time while hanging out of a car. Yeah. You know, and not worry about having to drop it because it's lighter than to have something that I'm going to, uh, you know, my arm's going to give out or whatever. Like that 28 to 70 F2. <laughs> the, what, the lids we filming the on right we're now. Using right now. Holy heck. <laughs> He was giving it to me at the wedding, and the last wedding that we just shot. And every time he gave it to me, I had to like shoulder that thing. That thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a weak person. Ex-military, you know, fitness is important. But that is just something that like I just wouldn't want to carry all day. And I don't know how the heck he does it. He carries that like primarily as the main lens. I can't. Yeah, it's a it's a three pound lens. Yeah. The camera. That listen. Uh, bye. <laughs> and for y'all that are gonna say, oh, he's weak, or oh, he's complaining. Carry something for three pounds for more than nine, nine, ten hours. Something you want to know something action. crazy? That's gonna weigh down on you. Trust me. Y'all want to know something crazy? I've, I've handheld this lens on the R5 with the small rig V mount plate and the small rig uh, 50 watt hour battery with a top handle and a Shinobi for eight hours yeah, for no, a wedding. No. Let me, let me, let me give you some insight. Ounces lead to pounds, and pounds lead to pain. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now for the military people out there, for the people that know what I'm talking about, you'll understand this, this, that's not, not a game. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Cause like, like I didn't have no issues the next day after the fact. 
fucking dude. Thing. I was holding your camera. I held your camera about ten times, and just because I guess I'm not used to carrying around a camera camera gear for that long that weighs that much. Yeah, yeah. Dude, my shoulder hurt the next morning. It was kind of <laughs> sore. I was like, what, what is going on? I went to go lift up my shoulder to stretch in the morning. I was like, oh, okay. See, yeah. like, I'm only 27. I'm, I shouldn't be feeling like that. But, man, I couldn't yeah. do it. I couldn't do it. Y'all want to know something? Y'all want to know something crazy? Um, this first episode ain't even going um, tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow is my birthday. The first episode might go up tomorrow on my birthday. If it don't go up, it's because... I didn't get a chance to edit this video tonight, so it'll go up either sometime, more than likely it'll go up next Monday. Yeah. Yeah, next Monday. Uh, so with YouTube, what I'm working on is for YouTube, I'm working on every other Monday. I was going to try every Monday, but the way my schedule is with, you know what I'm saying, kids going back to school from Christmas break and my son in karate and... uh. The girls doing cheerleading. I'm, I'm, I just need to be able to find time to get in here to be able to shoot videos, and yeah. this is one of those days where I have a time. I have time to come and be able to shoot a video, and like we can just sit back and kick it and talk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, back to the lenses thing. For me, everybody wants to get these Polar Pros if they had no uh, budget. Man, you you know well, why you know why everybody getting Polar Pro is because of Peter McKinnon. Yeah, I know. For me, it's like I've used them. I, I wasn't that impressed. For me neither. Me, the one that gave me the the biggest impression, the one that I use still to this day the most out of everything, is the Freewell magnetic filter system. I knew he was going to say that. Everybody's I use Everybody's complaining easy. that they fall off of their camera. They've had them break or whatever. I'm, I'm sure that there's onesies and twosies, and eventually everything gets weak and fails. You have to get new rings. Not that expensive. Yeah, but man, the convenience of just magnetically swapping those things. I know Peter McKinnon has just dropped like the that you know that that the new system that recon that or that, something like that. Yeah, that you could do the kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of those Polar Pro lenses is like two or three of these Freewell lenses. Yeah, let's just put that out there. But you want to know something crazy? I use Neezy. I like I got a Neezy lens on here right now. Sure. It's, <laughs> I, no, no, no. They do make lenses. They do. Yeah, they make cinema lenses. Oh, well, that's make, why. I, that's why I said lenses. lenses. Well, yeah. Even they, that's not a basic. That's a thirty-two hundred dollars lens. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, no. They do make lenses. I was just watching a video. Um, they just dropped. I think the the Nizi Athena. I think lens. Um, prime lenses. I think it's fourteen, twenty-four, thirty-five, fifty, and eighty-five. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah. Perfect. Uh no 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 just straight uh, just lenses? straight cinema lenses Nothing. and they affordable too. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing about it. I saw them. I thought about it, but I, I'm good. Um, but no, nah, I got a Nizi uh one to five ND filter on here right now. Only reason I got that on just to soften the image. Uh, so it's not like digitally sharp. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It like doesn't look, doesn't look like over sharp. Yeah, you know, especially because like we do have a lot of light in here too. If I was to take this off, it a lot of this wouldn't look the way that it looked. Um, but I personally use Neezy filters. And speaking of the free will, because I told him one time, I had a, a neat, not a Neezy, I had a, a free will magnetic lens. Damn, why did I say lens? I had a free will magnetic filter sure. break on me one time. What? Yeah, it was brand new. I had, as far as you dropped it? Nah, it just fell off the camera. Mm, like, I was see. I was shooting a video. It was on. I made sure it was on securely. I will say that. Because it, it was stuck on there. Like, I literally, like, wobbled it, the camera, to see if it the, the filter would come off. And it just, it didn't come off. And I just, I took, like, three steps. And there it just fell. There has to be something there. Because everybody that complains about the fact that... I ain't wheels, complaining, though. No, no, I'm saying, like, that says that free wheels fall off of cameras. Yeah. It's just wild to me because I hang out of cars going, like, 70 miles per hour. And I know, because I, I drive bouncing, them. Yeah, I know. And I'm bouncing <laughs> along the road. And I have yet to have one shift on me. So I don't yeah. understand. I, I put them to the test, all right? <laughs> so I don't understand how people, you know, shooting people standing still, yeah. how that falls off. Just, well, no, no, I was I was trying to do a vlog. Yeah, but even then, you're, you're, you know, you're pointing the camera to yourself. It's not like you're bouncing around. Bouncing around, around all over the place. Yeah, you're right. But you know, I don't, so I don't, I don't know, bro. Like, it, it, it just, 
Like I said, I shook the camera. There might be it like was a, on. There might be like a, a, a like a, a small gray area to yeah. where if you don't put it on like exactly perfect. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it's stuck on there, but it's one not little on there. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It'll just drop because that I put them on perfect every single time, and I've yeah. yet to have one fall off. That and was I've crazy. Used them on to over me. F- probably like eight lenses now. Yeah, I think I only I only matter of fact I use it on the sixteen to thirty five. See, that's yeah, what it felt like. Fall off? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the lens it fell off on. That is crazy to me. I was literally, I had just, matter of fact, it's funny because I ordered the the Tilta Mirage uh, system. Um, and That's that softbox name, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. That's the, the. Oh, the matte box. The matte box. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the matte box. I ordered the Tilta Mirage and it came with like a bunch of filters or whatever. And I ended up sending it back because I didn't like the image that I got out of it. Um, and the way that it like handles you know, colors or whatever. I've heard a lot about uh, people complaining about the the image quality out of the Mirage is kind of weird. Yeah, and that's why I, that's why I sent it back. Um, but I can use my Neezy filters on my uh, small rig matte box, so that's why I just stick with the small rig matte box. It's it's easier, mm, more convenient. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. But the literally, I was just like, it was so weird. I was on the 16 to 35. I tried to make a vlog. Matter of fact, it's a vlog that I ain't never put out. It's a, um, it's a how to be a perfect. Uh, I need to stop being a perfectionist video. And it's you see this um, uh, C stand case I got over here. Mm-hmm. It's the day that I got that. Literally, I literally walked outside, talked to the 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 delivery the UPS guy that delivered that and. I took two steps outside, and he looked at me. Matter of fact, I wonder if I can find the video on my security cameras on my house. That's a long time ago. Good luck finding that. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> but it, I don't know. It just it just randomly fell. Like, as soon as I walked outside, we was having a conversation, and it just dropped. And he looked, and he was like, that looked like an a expensive piece of glass. I said, it is. For those of you that don't know... Um Polar Pro lenses or Polar Pro filters are what like two something like high twos. I think them things like three hundred dollars a pop. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like high twos. Yeah, like yeah, high twos, like high twos, high twos, high threes. And free will magnetics are a hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. So for example, like I ain't even gonna talk about. You that. can literally buy three of them <laughs> for almost the same price. You could buy one Polar Pro filter. <laughs> I ain't even gonna talk about the Neezy filters. Oh man, because no. them Neezy filters, dog. That's like cinema, cinema quality filters for what he does. Is it overkill? Absolutely. Yeah. But I rather yeah. buy, have it not need it than need not have it in quality over quantity. Yeah. If well, you can afford it. Hey, more power to you. It, it's more so because I've used. Neasy filters in the past, yeah, and I've always liked the image that I've gotten from Neasy filters. If you had, if you had or could shoot three cars right now, right, what cars would they be and why? Uh, Koenig Sega Gera R, because to me, that's like the pinnacle of cars. Koenig Sega makes the most masterpiece of a, of a wheeled vehicle that I've ever seen. They have keys that are like. One of the 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 Konesa keys is a shield. It's a shield. Wait, that's that one car key that looked wild that you they showed got, me that yeah, one time. Yeah, they got they have like all different kinds of them, but they're all big old keys I that are like that. the size of your palm. Yeah, I remember you. And you flip them over, they got all the like buttons. That. But they're like these bougie keys that come in these giant boxes, like these these big boxes that you open and like have glass and all this stuff. Like yeah, yeah, yeah they're they're bougie. I, know I, I remember you showed me something crazy about a car key one time, and I'm like, what? it was that. It was a Konesa Gear R. That's wild. Yeah, and then I would say number two would be a McLaren Senna. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what my fetish is with McLarens, but that Senna, man, they need to make that thing straight legal. And then I would say number three, because I haven't shot it yet, Yeah, it'd probably be the, the most feasible for me to shoot, but um, I haven't shot it yet, a 1996 white R33 GTR V-Spec 2, because that's my dream car. Okay, um... Cause I know some I know some cars like you can't get legally in America. Okay, so how that works is it's a twenty five year grandfather law. Uh, so for example, the car that everybody's been wanting, the GTR everybody's been wanting, the one from the Paul Walker drove R thirty four. Yeah, yeah. It just became legal this year because uh, it just turned twenty five. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. People have been importing them since last year because they're just stockpiling them and not driving them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not driving them. 
but um now they're fully legal for import. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my coworker just showed me the other day. Um, uh, I think it was a nineteen. I think it was a nineteen seventy. Somewhere between the nineteen sixties and nineteen seventies, uh, a charger, and a uh. Ooh, what's that called? It had like fins on the back of it. Like when I say fins, I it was more like a triangle where the uh. The yeah, taillights are. That's kind of hard because there's a lot of supercars it, have stuff like that. It wasn't a supercar. It was a basic car? I think it was a basic car. And uh, suited up or like fully restored, it was like $184,000 for the car. Was it a JDM Classic? No. It was a... It was it an American car? It was an American car. Oh, then I don't really know American cars like that. I'm more oh, okay. of a Jap guy. Yeah, I know okay. a lot of American cars, but I probably don't. I couldn't tell you off of a description like that. You could describe a any JDM car to me, and I'll I'll tell you. But when it comes to domestic cars, I don't know about the stuff like that. Not as much. Okay, so you see how the fins is on this, mm -hmm. somewhat similar to is that. Is it a Bel Air? That's what it was. Bel -Air. It was a 1959 Bel Air. My uncle just had one of those. Yeah. He had a purple one. Li he literally was bringing that up to me and was talking to me about it. Uh, That's the only reason, um, because he was looking one up and he found one for like 20 grand. That's a good price. Yeah. I forgot how much my cousin got my uncles for. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Told me one time, but I don't remember. But yeah, those three cars for sure. Yeah. Um, shout out to Wesley Farms, dog. I man, I I, I buy the hell out of coconut water from BJ's. See, I wish I could drink coconut water. Uh, coconut yeah, I, water. I, I drink the hell out of this coconut. You know, water. How, you know how when you're hydrated, it's supposed to make you pee. No, nah, Celsius. That's Celsius. Me and Celsius, and you know that. For oh fact. yeah, see, but you're weird. You drink a Cel <laughs> you'll drink one Celsius and pee five times. <laughs> that that's that's weird. That's not I don't normal, know, dog. I don't, every time I drink a Celsius, don't get me dog, wrong. Every time I, I finish Celsius, I gotta piss. No, but I have to pee like five. I times. know, yeah, I know. That's why I'm saying that. Yeah, that, sh bro, that shit is weird. Dog. That is weird. But for me, Didn't like, find drugs in the Celsius. No, nah, it wasn't Celsius. That oh, was man. what the hell was that that they discontinued? It was something that they had like they they found traces of like, I think it was like cocaine or some crazy shit in it. Was it ghost? Nah, it's it, it's nothing that's on the shelves right now. Oh. It was something that they had before. I will never drink a ghost again. No, you know what? I will never drink. I drunk one of them shits and had me on like eighty. For you guys, for the, for you gym rats who are watching this, you know he's talking about ghost. You y'all got to educate him about red line. Red I line heard about that. is they it literally that. has a line on the bottle that is like one third of the way through. Yeah. If you drink past that, they literally tell you that they're not liable for you dying. Damn, I'm good. Yeah, play with that if you want to. I had red line one time. I'm a guy that could drink two double shots of, of espresso and all this shit like twice a day, and I'd be perfectly fine. I could drink like four Red Bulls, and I'll be straight. I drank to that line of Red Line, and I was like, you know Nigel from Wild Thornberries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was me. Nah, that's me with Red Bull. Is that his name, or is it Tommy? No, Tommy's from Rugrats. Tommy's from Rugrats. Who was the little, little wild child? It was Donnie. Donnie, there Donnie. it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Donnie, that's Donnie, me Donnie. if I drink red line. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and if y'all know me, I'm like a real chill person. I ain't I don't get hyper, I'm real quiet, like I'm I'm mad chill. Yeah, for real. Boy, if you if I'm wired like that, you know that thing is lethal. <laughs> lethal. <laughs> yeah, because I don't I don't I don't really do like energy drinks like that. I stopped drinking the Celsius for a while, but I drink them. If you're gonna right. drink, if you're gonna drink an energy drink, Celsius would probably be the best. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I like to dabble milligrams of, of caffeine. Uh, caffeine. Yeah, I ain't know that till the other day. Well, I mean, the, I av the average black tea is like three. Uh, uh, yeah, look at a black tea. Look at the back of a black tea. They have little markers on them. That's crazy because I, I I I drink black tea actively. Go, look, not look, active. Do you I have, don't drink black tea. I drink mint tea. I do drink you have bush tea. What what brand? Bush tea. A bush. That's what you you drink. Is that the brand? Pick that shit off the off the trees, bro. Oh, no, I'm talking about like a legit <laughs> brand. I'm not talking about no hood, so no hood, hood, hood economics, all right? No, man, that's that's Jamaican crap. 
No, I'm saying like if you get like Bigelow, for example, that's what I drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you look at the back of it, it has cups on it, and it'll tell you what the strength is of caffeine per mm. tea that you get. Like I have, I had um, what is it like vanilla cinnamon chai tea or something like that that my mom had got me one time. That sounds bougie, dog. Uh, Mint you know tea, me. bro. Mint tea. But on the back of it, yeah. it had 300 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, that's more than a Celsius. That's wild. That's and crazy. it's less volume. That is crazy. No. Yeah, some of them no, teas, in, if you look at the tea, some of them teas go up to a thousand milligrams. <laughs> nah, bro. I'm what good. kind of crackhead tea is that? I don't know, cause I ain't no crackhead. But mm, um, I don't drink that. Yeah. So this episode, though, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, dog. We done went off topic so many times. No, 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 no. Let, let's get it twisted. Let, let's I not get it twisted. There we go. A lot of times, but I will say this, right? It was fun. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the whole purpose of this. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not all just about business. It's, it's supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to be educational and, and a learning experience on both sides. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, dog, like, I might make a bloopers video out of this just for the hell of it. Yeah. <laughs> People going to be like, what is y'all talking lot, about? We didn't have a lot this this episode. What you mean we didn't have a lot, bro? We had Besides a your lot. your tangents. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about, like, like. You know, like funny things, like just little small dumb things that we did. Like we did, oh. like the 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 what is that shit called? The, the the Jamaican pocket that I had in when I did my YouTube video. Jamaican? You mean the Jamaican room? Yeah, I got it outside of the car. What? No, but what what, what did I say? Remember? What is it called? No, not the Jamaican rum. Nephews and nephews. Not the Jamaican and Ray? rum. It was a dark one that you had. Something oh, estate. Appleton. At, remember when I was like, Appleton <laughs> Estates, like that. Like, like that's a blooper, right? <laughs> Appleton Estates. Yeah, that's that's a it well, if you're not Jamaican or if nobody's ever introduced you to it, it's a real good rum. Um But the nephew and Ray's is sixty three it says sixty three proof, but it's all honesty, it smells like gasoline. Listen here. <laughs> all right. I, uh, if you're, if you, it's 120 proof. If I'm you're ex Navy or retired Navy veteran, whatever it is, you know sailors drink. We are very much a fishbowl. This that he is talking about will very much test you. It is up there with Everclear. <laughs> it is lethal. I, you can, I promise you, I, I challenge any sailor to send him a video. Of you drinking more than three mason jars of this stuff in one sitting? No, I don't think they'd be. Able to I don't do think it. so because my I'm three? a heavyweight. I'm oh, I'm a I'm three? a I'm a I'm a, I'm a, nah, I'm a world push- champion heavyweight when it comes to drinking. I'm gonna say that right now. That's pushing. It. And I had a cup in a half, a, a mason jar in a half, and I was like belligerent drunk. All right, <laughs> I don't do that. I don't drink to the, on that extent at all. And I I was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Dog, like this, that, that, that rum specifically is more so like one or two. That's the rum that you drink when you're trying to have a baby. You want to have a baby, and the other one of the other, one of your other partners tells you no. Give him this. No, I, I say that mean. that's that's a rum that that is a rum if you want to forget about life. Yeah, if yeah. You, if you going through some shit, I would say drink that. That right there. Will make you rethink your life, like. Well, we say this, we say this, but we do not condone you drinking to forget. No, that is a bad habit. That no. is not that great. We don't. There's a lot of other outlets that you yeah. could use, but if you decide to 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 dabble in that, yeah, try that. Seek seek help, right? Go get help. As somebody that's dealt with depression, you know what I'm saying. Somebody that's dealt with going through. Uh, you know, being stuck in your own head and everything. Reach out to somebody and talk to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't never think you're alone. You know, cause and don't ever look at it like this. Uh, imagine you doing something to yourself, self harming yourself or anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, imagine. You might thinking like, oh, it'll free me and all this other stuff. No more pain, blah, 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 whatever. Blase, squase. Um, look at all the people that you're going to hurt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look at all the people that's going to be affected by you doing something like that. All right, y'all. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so you get notified when we upload another video.
You know what I'm saying? And um, for real, bro, like, if you going through something, dog, reach out to somebody and get help because, like, that's that's real serious. You know what I'm saying? Don't do nothing crazy. Don't hurt yourself. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Um, Like, really get help, dog. And, uh, and I'll add to that by saying, you know, if you guys don't have anybody to talk to and you feel comfortable doing it, you guys can definitely reach out to us and we'll help in any way we possibly can. Facts. And if we can't help you, we'll find somebody in your area that will be able to help you. Stay safe. And I say this all the time. Stay dangerous because there's a lot of crazy stuff that's going on not in the world. You know what I'm saying? And protect yourself and your loved ones. I ain't saying go do no bodily harm to nobody, but protect yourself and protect your loved ones. You know what I'm saying? We out. Peace.